not even the grave could hold him down. But there is only one king who can save the day. So clear the stage, prepare the way. Cause heaven and earth are singing. Glory, hallelujah. Let the whole world see the greatness of our God. An awesome wonder, he reigns forever. We know the greatness of our God. His power is in us. He lives within us. We know the greatness of our God. Welcome everyone to our worship service here at New Life Christian Church. I see a lot of familiar faces and I see a lot of new faces, so welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, just a couple um, reminders and announcements. This is the communication card, so if you have any prayer requests or if you're new here, we ask that you fill this out and then place it in the canvas boxes underneath the wooden offering boxes. And we're trying something new with our order, so if you don't like that, put on there in big, bold letters, I don't like new things, and then put it next to the canvas box in the plastic line box, and we will get to your request. No, we are really happy and excited that you're here. Uh, hopefully, everyone got a bulletin today, and uh, everyone go like this. Everyone look to the right, look to the left. All right, we all have excuses, and they're like armpits. And they all stink. So if you want to know what's going on here at New Life Christian Church, inside here is the announcement. So, for example, we have the uh, uh, Disc Golf Open Chapel coming up. And you won't know that unless you read it in here. So there's a lot of ways that we can plug in as brothers and sisters in Christ. And if you don't know, it's not my fault. Yes, sir. Yeah, and you wouldn't have known that had you not listened to Roy or looked into the bulletin. But yeah, May 5th, we got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, here in a second after we pray, we're going to have a time of special music, and then we'll get back to worshiping God. Let's go to him in prayer. Father, thank you so much for this, this weather, your creation. Father, I thank you very, very, very much for your son, which is the reason why that we're all here. I pray that we can worship him and worship you. And then leave this place and live for him. In Jesus' name, amen.
Psalm 19, we read, The heavens declare the glory of the God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth. Their words to the ends of the world. Let's all stand as we lift our voices to praise our God.
needs compassion, the kindness of a Savior. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior. The hope of nations. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and Jesus conquered the grave So take me as you find me All my fears and failures Fill my life again I give my life to follow everything I believe in. Now I surrender. I surrender. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. of the glory that you have, the glory that you have bestowed on us as your heirs, your children. Lord, we just pray that our voices may be pleasing in your sight, that uh, our songs may be uplifting to you. Lord, we just pray your spirit may now enter into us, enter, enter into each of our hearts and change us that we may have the opportunity to spend eternity at your throne. Pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. You may be seated.
We uh, come to the time in our service where we celebrate the Lord's Supper. So if you haven't got uh, your emblems, they're right outside the store in the uh, little podium as you came in here. So please take that opportunity. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys know this, but the world gets a lot of stuff wrong, especially when it's talking about love. And, and if you listen to any, any uh, radio station... We uh, hear songs that completely miss the mark when it comes to love. I mean, you've got that Saturday Night Live skit where, what is love, baby, don't hurt me, don't hurt me no more. Well, that's, that's impossible for us to do. Also, I was told as a kid that loving you never meant having to say you're sorry. Wow, that's uh, biblical, right? It's not. That was a joke. But... If we turn to God's word in 1 John 4, 9 through 12, it does tell us exactly what love is. It says, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us. And sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. Do you guys see the difference? It's pretty obvious. You know, you got some cheesy love song, and then you have the creator of the universe telling us what love is and how we can show that love. And that's why we take and celebrate the Lord's Supper, because God sent his son Jesus to die for us. If you turn to Luke chapter 22, verses 14 through 23, it said, And when the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. And after taking the cup, he gave thanks and he said, take this and divide it among you, for I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. And I'll continue reading in just a second, but so we know what God's love is, and Jesus is fulfilling that with his disciples and saying, hey, this is my body, which is going to be broken for you. This represents my blood, which is going to be shed for you. And then it continues on in verse 21, but the hand of him who is going to betray me is with mine on the table. The Son of Man will go as it has been decreed, but woe to that man who betrays him. So not only is God demonstrating his love for us, but never be surprised when humans act like humans. You have Jesus' closest apostles sitting next to them. And later on in, in that verse, they even start arguing about who is the greatest among them. So just because God loves us doesn't mean that we have it all figured out or we'll, we'll ever figure it out. But I do know one thing. That by each of us loving one another, we demonstrate what God has demonstrated to us. Never forget that. Father, thank you so much for sending your son. He is the reason why we are here. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our worship. And Father, I pray that we all live lives worthy of your calling. In your son's name I pray. Amen. Our scripture reading for today is, I have two, it's out of the New Living Translation. The first one is Genesis 1, 1 through 5. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty. 
The darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light, and God saw that the light was good. Then he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. And the evening passed and morning came, marking the first day. Now I'll be reading out of Colossians 1, 15 through 17. Christ is the invisible image of the is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. He existed before anything else, and he holds all creation together. Okay, if the kids want to go, and I think that um, we have a special place for them to go. Morning, simply because of the text and the subject matter that we're coming to this morning. I, I guess that one of the things that we need to do, first of all, is thank the Lord for our scripture reading this morning, because it gives the under, uh, us the undergirding for what we're going to be looking at today, and that's the Almighty God. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, I want to thank you now that you have brought us to this place to listen to your word, to... Uh, to understand new thoughts, new things that maybe we had not thought about. Pray that you'll be with my words this morning, that they might be your words. And I want to thank you that you have brought us to this place to, uh, to do uh, these very things here today. To worship you and in spirit and in truth, looking for that greater day when we will see and gather you and gather around your throne with all the myriads of people that have ever lived to praise and honor you through all eternity. Until that time, Father, I pray that we can, may get to know you uh, like we really should, the one true God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I want you to come and meet our creator God today. Uh, in the Old Testament, over, w hundreds of times in the Old Testament, in fact, the term for God is used for the term in the name Elohim. And it's the plural of uh, the, the singular they don't use because there was a description of God to, to be given out in the plural because as read for us this morning, that they let us make man in our own image. God was there with Christ in the very beginning. Uh, and so it is Elohim, the God with the plural name. Creator, mighty, and strong is what it means. Um, it, his name is connected with all the great events of power throughout the uh, entire world that we know of, and even before the world began. God, in his greatness and his power, he spoke the word and things came into existence. Um, and so we're here today to maybe learn a little bit more about this God, Elohim, the one powerful God. And to maybe understand that God wants to be a part of our life. And that's an amazing thought to me that the Almighty, the, the God of all the universe, the God who created everything, wants to come and abide with me, wants to come and to be a part of my life. And that's an amazing thing. In fact, Paul later on in the New Testament says that we are the very temple of God. We are his dwelling place in Romans, the sixth chapter. And so it is here today that we've come to, to maybe understand a little bit more about this God. And, and a good many of you have been in church all your life. I know that. Uh, and have looked at this and these texts and many others and, and uh, looked at God. And so 
Uh, but it's just, just like Mavis and myself. I'm I just going to use her as an example. Uh, we've been married 59 years. 59 years. And you know there's still stuff about that girl that I'm learning. <laughs> and I'm sure she's learning more about me all the time. She just, uh, you know, she turns and shakes her head and she says, I can't believe this, you know. I can't believe this. I, I remember, you know, I came from a family of six and uh, the youngest of six kids and uh, uh, ministers kind of ran as a theme in our family, I guess. Uh, all the four boys are ministers or were ministers. They, uh, three older ones have uh, gone to be with the Lord. My oldest sister married a minister and uh, served. And now Richard, my oldest uh, sister's husband, was kind of an airhead, you know, and he was a good guy, you know, and sometimes he was a deep thinker and other times, well, let me just tell you, anybody that needs to take a chair into the bathroom to get ready for the day has got a problem, you know. And so he would take a chair and sit there and comb his hair in the mirror, of which some of us never had that luxury. <laughs> anyway, Richard always served small churches, and uh, one of the smaller churches that he served, um, uh, I was told a story. I wasn't there that day. I was told a story. And as he went around the, in the congregation, introducing some of the new folk to the old folk that had been there for a long time. And he said, and this is so-and-so, uh, and this is so-and-so, and this is my wife, and he forgot her name. And he said it the second time, he, and he says, and this is my wife. And finally, my, my sister says, I am Thalma, Richard, you know, your wife. And, and so sometimes... We want to understand, God wants us to understand more about him than we think that we really know, okay? So what does Elohim, our creator God, want us to know about him? What character qualities, what things does he lay out for us, if you will, for us to understand and know? Uh, we can learn so much through just the creation that we have and that he's created for us. In fact, in Romans, the first chapter, Paul says to those uh, Christians in Rome, he says uh, that the creation stood as a testimony of who God was from the very beginning of time and that everybody is without excuse because they have the creation as a testimony. Well, looking at the creation, what can I de determine from that? Well, the creator God is a creator of order. Elohim is order. All I have to do is to look at the very beginning verses of Genesis. And if you will kind of just use your imagination before there was anything, it was formless out there. There was no form. It was absolutely without form. And the Spirit of God was moving on the face of the water. There wasn't anything out there, but yet God says, and before he finished it, he had a, a design for it that was completely in order. And before you can have a creation, you've got to have the creator. Before you can have anything else, a design, you have to have the designer. So, Elohim actually is in order, the God of order and everything in this universe. There was no light, no sound, just cool water, cold water as the Spirit of God moved. And as God spoke, things began to be put into order. Have you ever been in those kind of households with uh, there is no rhyme or reason? You walk in and everything has... <laughs> Looks like explosion in some home, you know. We had a, a couple ladies that um, uh, uh, they were, uh, one of the ladies was taking care of her sister who was uh, mentally challenged. Uh, her husband had passed away that lived out on the farm. I'd go calling on him, and they would always meet me at the door. They would never let me inside. And after they, the one that was the caretaker passed away. 
Then they went in to discover that the house literally just had pathways through it. They were complete hoarders, these two ladies. They had money that was shoved in pages of books, and so they had to go through every book that was there. Everything was in disorder. In fact, when I helped get the lady's body out, that we just literally came to this world. I wasn't there, so I can't testify, or I don't know. But I just have to know that since God is a God of order, he put things into order like it really should be. Um, I like order. You know, I can't sit at my desk and, and study if I've got a lot of things that are cluttering my desk. And so the first thing I do is I begin to put away things, all my pencils, my pens, my papers, that, that don't specifically have to do with what I'm doing because I can get distracted real easy. And it's easy for me not to finish the course that I laid out to do. So I, I have to put things in order. But here's God, a God of order. He brings order to disorder. Elohim, he took the random of creation and he made definition out of it. You, you look day by day, inch by inch of this whole first chapter, 31 verses in this Genesis 1. This is day one. This is day two, dawn down the line, until he finishes up on day six, and he, and he says, he looks out at everything, and he says, wow, this is really good. This is excellent. Day by day, not only did he create order, but he took the random, and he made a design out of the random. He created it into definition. Um, and that's exactly what he wants us to do work out in, in our life. He wants to take our randomness, our disorders. And I don't know about you, but I, have you ever had, are you ever disorganized? <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you this. Is your sinful nature sometimes disorganized? And, and here's God. He says, I want to take and I want to make order out of your sinful disorder out of your life. And that's what he does. God in the creation, God took the mud of the earth and made man. In, in verse 26 and, and down to the end of the chapter, he said, this, the Elohim, the, the creator God used in um, the plural here, he talks to or he refers to this other person in the Godhead and he said, let us make man in our image, we are far different than any other of all the creation that God has created. Let me just, you know, I was doing a little, um, oh boy, I, but I can't find it. Oh, here it is. I found it. I, I found this little book and what heaven's going to be like. But um, in it was kind of interesting. And I don't know whether you noticed this, that when, when God made man, we only have four taste buds on our tongue. Did you know that? Only four. Only four taste buds. Uh, here they are. Um, uh, the tip of the taste bud, uh, uh, of the tongue is the taste bud for salty. Um, and uh, then it goes back to the savory. Taste bud, there's for bitter. And there's one for the taste bud for sour. Um, and in their sight... I, you can only see so far, but the light spectrum that he gives us is so much bigger than what we can actually see with our own eyes, even with the telescopes and whatnot. The, the, the radiation, all these rays of light that God created. He took this man and he made him, and in making man, he also made him in a very specific way, he made him in his likeness. I'm made. You are made in the likeness of God. Um, that's reassuring to me because I don't want to uh, come across somebody that looks like some kind of an alien when I get home. I want to know my God when I get there. Elohim, the creator, is a creator of beauty. The closer we look, the better he looks. Here's a, a, a quote that I found from Jeremy Taylor. It says this, 
What can be more foolish than a man who thinks that all the rare fabric of heaven and earth can be changed, uh, come by change, when all the skill of science is unable to make an oyster? Just all the, 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 all the science that's out there. We can't produce anything but hear God by the, the one word. He says it and it all comes into, into being. Dan, you posted some stuff this last week about creation. I appreciated that very much. Uh, he comes up with some good posts. I love those, brother. Um, and weather for us and the beauty of it, the full spectrum of everything, the, the, the color the, uh, that's out there in this whole world. Um, when I was still flying, one of the interesting things that happened to me at one point um, it had been kind of a misty day, and I took off flying. And usually we just see a portion of the bow of the rainbow, okay? That day, as I flew, I looked out my right, and there's a full rainbow around my wing, my right wing, the full rainbow around it. How cool is that, you know? Color. Uh, God must be, God must love color because a, as you take a look at the foundation stones of what heaven will be like. Marvelous colors. If you take a look at the, the, the earth that he's created, wonderful things that are out there as far as that is concerned. Whatever, wherever we look, we see light. He is the light, the father of lights, where there is, as uh, James put it, there is no variation in his turning. You can check him out any way you want to, and God is pure. He says, come and check me out. Just know of who I am because there's no variation. I want you to come and there's no flaws in me and I'm worthy to earn your trust. Whenever we looked at the complex shapes of this world, not only the color, but the shapes, we see multiple shapes, the complexity of them. I like my crystallization and my, my minerals, and each one of them is so unique. And sometimes they'll even have inside of a crystal, a phantom crystal inside of the crystal. That is so amazing. Um, and so sometime I'll have to show you. Um, from the smallest atom that's out there that has shape to the largest stars that are even out there more than 100 million light years away, however far that is. And all of God's creation, there's complexity of shape and sizes. Wherever we look, we see are the beautiful sounds. Um, we, we love to, Mavis loves to feed the birds, and uh, she also feeds me once in a while. More than once in a while, obviously. Um, but anyway, uh, so we have all kinds of birds out there hanging around. And you can tell the different birds. And sometimes they'll, they'll get out there and they'll start calling. I'm in the house and I'll call back at them and they'll start to answer me. You know, it, it's fun to do that. Uh, the, the sounds that are out there uh, is amazing. Elohim created the sounds, the sounds of music. And we sang this morning. And who think who who do you think gave us the sounds and the instruments to play and to praise God, the voices to do so? It is God, the Elohim God, who did that. Elohim God is the creator of not only those things, but of words. In Genesis, he gives us the power to express ourself. Every word that we say is an expression, a gift from God. Just think of what this world would be like if we could not communicate with one another. God has given us words. And here's one word from God. God spoke. It says God spoke and the worlds came into existence. He is literally the Big Bang. He said, he spoke and things happened. 
He upholds, it says in Colossians 1 that was read for us this morning, he upholds all things by the word of his power. Whenever he speaks, he holds it up, he holds it together, he keeps it together because he has the ability to do so. He is the Elohim, all-powerful God who is able to do that. He upholds all things. He gives us words, too, that we might praise him. God is also a co-creator with Christ. Uh, it, this is spoken of numerous times in the scriptures. Genesis is talked about in um, John's gospel. It's talked about in Colossians. It's talked about in many places. And this, the co-equal God, creator God, when he said, let us make man in our own image, he speaks of everything and he wants us to respond to him. God, God's power, folks, is all powerful. Elohim can do anything he wants except for one thing. He can't change your heart unless you want it to be changed. We can have a hardness, a heart, and we can say, absolutely no, God, I don't want you. I don't want anything to do with you. And, and God, the all-powerful God who created all the heavens and the earth, the stars as you flung them into space, there's a boundary that, is, that will not be passed, will not be crossed. And that's our free will. You can hang on to those sins if you want. Or you can have a new life as he's promised that you could and can. And this decision is, is up to you. I'm convinced if I would live 100 lifetimes, folks, I would never, in the wildest imagination, come to understand the fullness of all of God's creation. I, I started young. I, I started uh, kicking rocks down the alley and picking up the pretty ones. And then when I was in 8th grade, 7th or 8th grade, we did a report on... Uh, I got to choose whatever report I wanted to do. I chose mine on the International Geophysical Year. That shows how old I was. And in this, it's what science did. They set up all these different stations all over the world to gain as much information as, as they could about this creation called Earth that God has made. And in all they're getting, they didn't even scratch the surface. They didn't even begin at, at all to understand. And that was back uh, a long time ago, you know. I'm not even going to tell you how long ago that was, but a long time ago. And since then, it has come to where we know a lot more about God. Have, do we know everything? Do we know everything about his creation? Absolutely not. But we do know this. I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt that I know this, that God will forgive your sins. God does love you. God has sent him, his son to save you from your sins. We're going to stand and sing this morning. There's power in the blood. If there's a decision to be made this morning, I'd like for you to come make that decision as we sing this last song. So as we go through this song, I want you to put your hands together and uh, help us keep time and give glory to God. Ready? One, two, three, four. <laughs> Yeah. 
your passion and pride. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary Scott. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you lift daily his praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power In the precious blood of the Lamb In the precious blood of the Lamb In the precious blood of the There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power. I guess it's <laughs> love having you here this morning, and uh, may God bless you this week. Uh, do check the bulletin. I, Roy, is uh, we're going to put him in charge of, as the time goes on, we've got about three weeks, and the Craigans are going to be here, and uh, you do not want to miss out on Sunday morning. You do not want to miss that. Each and every worship service, we want to praise the Lord here. We want to give honor only to him because he's worthy of it and no one else. Let's close in prayer and you're dismissed for the week. Father, we just want to thank you that you have given us this day our time together. Help us to understand that you are the great Elohim God.
heaven and earth. And we give you the praise. Give us the strength for this coming week. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.